Okay, well, you know, Thanksgiving time, there are two pies. There's pumpkin pie and there's apple pie. I mean, there's all kinds of pies, They're only really great pies, but the two pies that are synonymous with the holiday are pumpkin pie and apple pie. And this is, in my opinion, the best apple pie on the planet. And let me show you where I got it from. I got it from, oh boy, that's too close, huh? Hold on, hold on. All right, let's move that out of the way. I got it from this book. Uh, and it is, it's the best apple pie I've ever eaten, let alone ever made. Um, and it's page 762. And it is the caramelized apple pie. And let's go over the ingredients, right? So it involves five pounds of apples. I use a combination of grannies and honey crisps. Five pounds of those. They're gonna be peeled and sliced. I believe it's got a cup of heavy cream. It's got a half cup of orange liqueur. I use Contru. It's got a cup of bourbon. And I've been using Bullet. I have used Maker's Mark, actually, but I like the Bullet. Uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon. This is sugar. It's going to be a pound of sugar. A pound. And ten ounces of butter. So, and that's just for the apple pie filling, right? Then we're going to make the pie crust, which I take from a different book. I take it out of Julia's book. And uh, my pie crust, she says, use shortening. I use the real thing. I went and found lard. Uh, so um, I took something that could be vegan, and I made it most definitely not vegan. But it is the bomb. I mean, I've been making this apple pie for years now, and... It is just phenomenal. So uh, I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to start peeling apples. I'll show you what they look like when I'm peeling them. Um, we're going to reduce. We're going to we're going to cook those apples in the sugar with some cinnamon and butter. And when they reduce their liquids, where they're going to hasten the evaporation of some of that liquid because we want that sugar to caramelize, right? And that's one of the key elements of this particular dish. That sugar's got to caramelize. And then we'll be adding. Uh, bourbon, contru, heavy cream, and reducing it some more. But we want to make sure that even through all that cooking, that our chunks of apple uh, remain uh, with some pulp. I don't want like applesauce. I want to have still some chunks of apple. Uh, so there's a few techniques involved in this, but it's not really hard. It just requires attention. And that's it. And it is Oh my God, it is the, uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna do the apple pie filling today, and then in a couple of days, closer to Thanksgiving, I'm gonna do the crust. I'll show you how we do the crust, and I'm gonna let you in on a little trade secret on that crust, and then we're gonna assemble that pie, and oh my God, you're gonna be able to taste it through the video. So here is my pound of sugar. It's a pound of sugar, and it requires two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now, that sounds like an awful lot. It really does. But trust me. Oh, wow. You know what? Let's cut that video. I don't think I have enough cinnamon in here. Let's go see if I have more cinnamon. Okay. So there's a teaspoon of my cinnamon. And there's, you know what? This is going to do it. Yep, that's going to work. It's, um, okay, so I need to order more of that cinnamon. You know what? Let's top it off with a half a teaspoon of this cinnamon, just to make sure that I've got enough. And that's it. Okay, so I need to order more. See, I have this Ceylon cinnamon, which is really, really nice. But I like for this the Vietnamese cinnamon because it's a little bit more spicy and pungent. But that's okay. This will work. So I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon in there in the sugar. And you see it looks like a lot of cinnamon. And it smells like a lot of cinnamon. But, you know, in this whole recipe, 
it really it really balances it out beautifully okay and there is my 10 ounces of butter oh it looks like an awful lot of butter doesn't it yeah well think about it like this this is going to make the filling to make two pies okay and you're going to have a slice so you're not going to eat all this butter you're going to eat you know some of that butter all righty so you know i'm not a professional uh, so it takes me a little bit longer to peel the apples than it would a professional however i do have my technique and i'll show you this the size and shape of the apple that i want so that all right so i think i want it just like that okay notice also if you might have noticed from the other videos i'm using a different board than i usually use um, this board is designated for fruit only uh, so this way um, you know over time when you're cutting onions and garlic and other items with you know aromas like that um, even though you wash the board the odors remain um, so by keeping this board designated for fruit only um, then I'm pretty much guaranteed that there aren't going to be any garlic uh, aromas leaching out into my apples and by keeping the chunks about that size right I could I could slice them thinner like this right that would be okay too uh, but if I do that um, then they might just disintegrate in the cooking process and then um, you know I would have um, apple sauce rather than chunks of apple and you know ultimately I want to have chunks of apple in this pie because you know it's not just the flavor it's the texture right so there's a there's a granny here's a honey crisp and then after this honey crisp I'm gonna stop the video and uh, we'll start resume the video after I've gotten them all uh, peeled and then we're going to go into the uh, cooking process so I'm just going to peel this honey crisp and I think I've got 10 apples in total uh, it's just over it calls for five pounds um, I think I'm just over five pounds so uh, that's fine because you know you got to remember you know peeling it like this is going to waste a little bit of the apple anyhow and, you know, hopefully during this whole session, I don't wind up cutting myself, you know, a lot of times. Uh, actually, you know, it's funny. I find that usually when I cut myself, it's when I'm cleaning my knife more so than when I'm using it for slicing or peeling. But every now and again, I'll get a finger stuck in the wrong place. And, you know, there's a little bit of Tom in the dish. All right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start the video again when I've got them all peeled. Now, I do want to point out one more thing. You know, typically when I, oh, look at that. Typically when I do this, um, I would peel my apples right over the bowl like this so that all of the peel goes into the waste bowl so it's easier to just throw it away. And then the cut apple goes in the other bowl. So I just want to point that out that, you know, even though I was peeling it over the board earlier because I was just trying to get it into the video. This is the way I typically do it. All right. So you see, I've got my apples, but look at the peel bowl. The peel bowl is just as full as the apple bowl. Does that make any sense? No, uh, but here are my apples. And now what's gonna happen is they're going in that pot with 10 ounces of butter. And they're going to simmer a little bit for, I don't know, a couple minutes. Then we're going to add the sugar and the cinnamon. And they're going to reduce all kinds of liquid. So let's get to it. But before we get into that, check out the cinnamon and sugar. Right? I just stirred it up. Look at that. That's crazy, right? All right. So here's my pot. And 
we're going to get the butter. Alrighty, 10 ounces of butter going in. Let that melt. And then we're going to add the apples. Yep, we're going to let that melt. And then we add the apples. All right, look at all that melted butter. That's a lot of melted butter. And it's not all melted yet. See it? Reminds you of the movie theater, doesn't it? Remember, we put that on the popcorn or that other stuff we put on the popcorn. Okay, here go the apples. I don't think I can just dump them in. I'm going to do it so it doesn't like it splash like that. I don't want it splashing. So, wow, it's doing a lot of splashing. I guess it's because I'm never doing it. I usually don't do it from this angle, but I usually don't have a video camera in the way either. Oh my God, this is horrible. I got to find a better way to mount the video on the stove. Okay, so all the apples are in that pot. I'm just going to give it a quick stir. I want to see if I can get everything coated with a little bit of butter. And then we're going to let them let them simmer there for, I don't know, a couple minutes. And then I'm going to add the sugar. And then you're going to see a transformation. It's really quite incredible, actually. That transformation. You'll see all that liquid just be released. And then we got to quickly do something with that because we want to make sure we can caramelize all that sugar. And it's going to be you know, apple juices and sugar and cinnamon. Oh my God. I'm getting all excited just thinking about it. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to... Oh my God, Lola, what are you barking about? I'm going to have to dismount the camera so I can show you all that liquid in the bottom of the pan. And what we need to do is we need to then crank up the heat uh, so that we can turn all that sugar into caramel. So uh, that's phase two. Okay, so what I normally do now is... I take some of that liquid out of the bottom and I put it into a separate pan and then I cook it really high without the apples just to get it to turn into caramel and that is what I'm about to do. Okay, see this pan on this side? That's most of the liquid. I still have some liquid in there and I've got the flame up and I'm going to caramelize what's in the blue pot but here's where the ma major part of the caramelization is going to go it's going to happen right here and then I'm going to dump that back into the blue pot once it caramelizes and uh, this way I can keep the apples as whole as possible right and and this requires attention because you don't want to let anything burn either, right? You got to be very careful you don't burn anything. So now is the time when I have to be really freaking careful. Okay, so this is the fun part, right? It's not thick at all yet. It's just starting to boil. Um, and sugar, interestingly, sugar burns above the 300 degree mark. Um, so, you know, it's going to be pretty damn hot. Uh, and we're going to let this... Um, turn it to the soft caramel stage and then uh, we're going to let it um, not burn but almost burn so it's going to have that kind of burnt caramel flavor I'm going to add it back to the apples all right so um, you see not a lot's happening with the apples right um, I don't have the flame on that high you see it's boiling on the bottom but it's not going to caramelize um, right away and maybe I'll raise that flame up to try to get it to caramelize that little bit of liquid in the bottom But in this pan look what's happening, right? I mean this looks like you know Willy Wonka's candy factory, right? So basically that's what we're making here. We're making candy um, I'm gonna let this go a little bit 
Um, and like I said, I want to make sure that I don't let it burn, but I want to let it um, get to that almost burnt stage. And then I'm going to throw it back in here. And then we're going to add the cream, the bourbon, and the um, contru. So sadly, you know, I was almost out. I'm almost out of the contru. And uh, I went to the store near, near the house and it was really expensive. So I just bought the little bottle. And when I get to the better store that has it, you know, at a better price, I'll buy the bigger bottle there. There's no point in buying the big bottle at like, you know, double the price. That's craziness. And I want to put this into perspective. You know, a shot is a shot. That's a cup of bourbon a cup that's going in this apple pie mix and then a half a cup of the contour and a half a cup of the um it might have been it might be a cup of heavy cream i don't know i gotta double check i think it's a half cup of heavy cream but that's a cup of bourbon all right i want to show you what this looks like so you see how it's sticking right and look at the, the pour on it right so it's caramel at this point. I want to get it a little bit past this point and then I'm going to throw it into the apples. But you see how it's it's no longer a liquid, right? I mean it's liquid, but look at how thick it is. Okay, I'm at that stage. It's time to pour the caramel into the apples. See it? see it how it's a little bit burnt on the pan right and that is if you get that on you that's that's hospital visit okay and now now I've got my apples with the caramel and I gotta tell you that smells awesome and now i think it's time let me double check i think it's bourbon and cream time okay cup of bourbon oh hold on i'm getting the contrary okay half cup of the orange liqueur, the pond shrew. And then it's gonna be a cup of heavy cream. And then we're gonna reduce it by half, and then we let it cool. Let me go get that cream. Okay, and a cup of heavy cream. So there's 10 ounces of butter, eight ounces of cream in there. And now, all we do is continue to cook this for a little while longer until the liquid reduces a bit and it thickens a bit. And then we let it cool. So I'm going to put that on the back burner and let it, well, I'll just leave it there and let it, um, let it do its thing. So this is what it looks like totally inside the pot. And uh, I got to tell you, it smells incredible in this house. All right, so it's almost done. Like if you look, it is thickening. So in a little bit, I don't know, another few minutes, I'm going to shut that off and let it cool. And then we bask in the delicious smells. All right, I think that's thick enough. I'm going to shut it off now. You see how I still have nice chunks of apple, but they're all cooked. Oh, wow, it's very steamy, huh? So I have light, light, nice chunks of apple. That's going to be in the pie. Um, I've got some nice liquid. And what we can do is we can strain some of that liquid off and then you serve it as a drizzle on the pie. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay, I'm shutting it off now. I'm going to put it on the back burner, let it cool.